All right, everyone, welcome back to the Clean Technica Ultimate EV Bracket Tournament, formerly known as Friday Night Fights for like the 20 minutes that we were calling it that. I am Joe Boris here with Zachary Shahan as always. And today I am Zachary we... Shahan as always. <laughs> You've been Zachary Shahan as long as I've known you. <laughs> yep. Hashtag professionalism. This week, it is the second episode of the EV Bracket Tournament. Uh, we're not into round two yet. We're still in the first round of eliminations. And today it's the Tesla Model 3, which is, I think, the first real mainstream EV that like functioned as a car against the, you know, Mazda MX-30 EV, you know. which is perhaps not the most practical of EVs. Well, let's let's just be honest. When this one was set up, I was like, oh, I forgot that car existed. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's a cool car. I, I got to tell you, like, I put it in the same league as sort of like the smart car or, you know, like an Amphi car or any goofy thing like that, where if you look at it and it speaks to you, great. But like, man, do you have to give up a lot of uh, sanity to make this thing make sense? We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. So as far as the the design, well, again, just a case of this car is so minimally produced and relevant that I messed up. And I was looking at the beginning of the comparison at the wrong vehicle because I had found the CX-30 instead of the MX-30. Oh. And I was like, oh, this horrible grill. Like, why, is, <laughs> why do they have these horrible grills on these cars? And then once I finally, when I was looking for the range, I was like, where's the range on this? I was like, oh, this is this is not electric. And then I found the electric version. And yeah, the point is of this part, <laughs> the point is that the car is so irrelevant. I didn't even know what it looked like. I was like, <laughs> I had forgotten what it looked like. And I had found the gas version and it was like, you know. But it's I would not say, even the so gas version. Like that's the trouble with Mazda. Mazda came up with this idea that they're going to name everything in this alphanumeric way. Like they used to have like the protege and stuff like that, but they got really nutty. There's the CX-30, which is an SUV. I think there was a different CX-30 that that one replaced. That was a hatchback. Now there's the CX-30 EV, the MX-30, the CX-5, the CX-50. And these are all like radically different cars. And if somebody comes up to me and tells me in the street, oh yeah, I have a CX-5, I have to go look that up and see which one that is. Yeah. Because it's so insane. So like- I mean, I, I saw something about this some years ago about how uh, just trademarking car names was such a pain in the butt that all the automakers just started switching to these, you know, alphanumeric combos, you know, yeah. BMW, BMW's long been at it, you know, but then now you've got like the Volkswagen ID4, ID3, ID5, ID6. But yeah, the point being that they, many of them do this and it's really annoying because nothing has much of an identity to the name and it's hard to, it's like, oh, which one is that? But I think Mazda's got to be one of the worst with these like two letters, hyphen. And what's funny is like their their main enthusiast offering, right, is the Miata, the, the car that we all think of as the Miata. That's not the Miata. That's the MX-5. But everybody's like still yeah. in that, that mindset that that's a Miata, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I had a pretty kick-ass Miata Hot Wheel when I was a kid. And it was it was really quite spectacular at the fights, at the racing, you know. It was it was a good car, you know. You, you, we used to bash them head to head. Did you do that with, you know, you, you just how, no no no? I I collected them in the package and like hung them up on the oh, wall. See, my brother and I, aside from racing games, we'd have a game where you know you, you each get like you know thirty or forty or whatever, and you go one by one. You bash them head to head, and the one that's standing wins. <laughs> Anyway, so we're <laughs> off topic, but that's the point of this show. So the the point of this show. Me. Yeah, but that's, that's true. That's true. But the point of the show is exactly that, right? Like everybody does reviews and everybody does a review online and they're all kind of the same. Like the seats are great. I could fit a baby seat in the back. My oh, stroller fit. A, there's a button here to move the seats up there's and a, back. Right. And there's but that's, trunk space. It has but that's trunk what space. this is. This makes us look at the cars through each other's eyes in a way that like, kind of makes sense. And I think, you know, we, we did that last week with the Hyundai Ioniq and with the Volvo C40. So to do that again this week, I, I think I'm going to go to the same place I always go when we talk about Teslas. And that's that I feel like they're not put together super well. And the Mazda 
is say what you will about its range, which is useless, or its looks, which is goofy, or the fact that it's almost impossible to buy because they won't sell you one, even if you want it. You know, they really did a good job putting this together. And I, I said in the comments when we were setting this up, I feel like whoever designed this car or built this car didn't get the memo that it was a throwaway California compliance car. And like, yeah. they like <laughs> loved it. Like they put their heart and soul into like the little tiny ridiculous details of this car whether you're talking about the suicide doors or like that cork board interior or like the really fine really comfortable like wool seats like it's a really nice car and you almost forget that it's nearly totally useless yeah well okay i was i was gonna say this like 10 or 30 minutes ago but basically although it looks a little too generic in my opinion like a too, little bit too much like any other car on the road it actually ha it has some kind of look and appeal. The headlights have a special sort of thing going on on both the front and the back, uh, the back backlights as well. And the the kind of the roof design, the the roof, the way it kind of it's got this kind of sporty but not too sporty, but fun but not too fun kind of thing going on. <laughs> it's fun but it's not too fun. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, it's not like too quirky, but it's a little quirky. It's like you look at it, you think, is it quirky or is it normal? I like that. I, I think it's a cool design in that respect. Yeah. It doesn't have a ridiculous grill like the gas version that I found or whatever that was. Uh, the suicide doors, you know, so we had a BMW i3 before the Tesla Model 3. And that and, had the same kind of yeah. suicide doors as and this I, did, right? Yeah, like, I loved the broken. suicide doors. A lot of people don't. Um, I, I can see why they can be problematic, but I personally like them much more with small kids, even without small kids. It's just... You got you want to put your bag in the back seat. It's like it's just easier. It's just easier, yeah. I don't really uh, see the the issue with it that some people really. But what are the issues like. that people have with it, right? Because like you have to close the back door first. <laughs> it's like I don't. I mean that it can be hard if you're in a tight space to open both of them and get someone get out of the back if oh, you're like I don't right find next that to, to be it. true at all i i find it much harder to like have to navigate around the other door open it and get i wonder if that's a real or an imagined objection right <laughs> i don't know people love to complain about the i3 and i still love it it's still one of my favorite <laughs> evs uh and it's funny yeah, because this, this vehicle the the mx30 if it had a range extender i think could have been the sort of spiritual successor to the i3 yeah, we were talking about it and you brought up the frunk and what's un what's under the hood. <laughs> I mean, the lack of a frunk. And uh, and then you went there and I would just... Yeah, so there was a lot of rumors uh, when this car was being developed. There was a lot of rumors in the press that talked about this being a range extended hybrid or, or a range extended EV and that it would use a small wankle rotary engine which is what mazda was really famous for in the 70s and 80s and even into the 90s as far as their performance cars right a lot of enthusiasts were really excited about this and then it came out that that was not to be for whatever reason and this car was sort of rushed out as a bev which is great you know we don't like hybrids here too much on clean technical we like the the bevs but what really blew my mind was how obvious it was that it was rushed you know because like you do get that sense there's something missing when you look under the hood. So instead of there being a frunk or, uh, you know, even a finished sort of uh, vanity cover, you've got this massive space like right there, right? And it goes all the way down to the ground and there's a plastic cover at the bottom. But I mean, if that wasn't there, you could see earth, you could see pavement under there. And there is more than enough room to drop a little motorcycle engines. You know, a hundred percent that that's what was happening. They developed this thing as a range extended EV and they just never brought it to market for whatever reason. It's a very kind of jarring thing to see that much space under a car. I mean, you know, I, I used to talk about this with friends of mine that, you know, when I started working on cars and you'd get cars from the sixties and seventies, you could drop something into the car you'd drop a 10 millimeter socket and you just it would just fall to the ground and then in the 2000s 2010s you would drop a socket under the hood and it was gone it was like in that myriad <laughs> nest of wires and hoses and belts and like you just prayed to god that it wasn't going to jam up a belt and destroy the whole car and this car is kind of back to the old ways but like 
I, you know, a 10 millimeter socket is one thing you could drop a whole lunchbox or one of those Stanley coolers into this thing and it would just hit the ground underneath the car. So stick your head in there a little more, like uh, just stick it in deeper and like just squash it a little bit. <laughs> just right in there. You can fit your whole head. It's even this picture doesn't do it justice. It looks like there's more there than there really is. Yeah, it is no, like I, a I, gaping I, hole. Yeah. I was thinking that it probably there's more there than, than it seems. Uh, I think the Rex option is still a very good so obviously the the world is changing to bevs much more in the markets where plug-in vehicles are maturing europe china the the shift is going more and more to bevs and you know plug-in hybrids are still selling in in a lot of in, in high numbers and growing as well but bevs are the, the future you can say range extended electric vehicles which is basically plug-in hybrids with big batteries if we want to just simplify the 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 user side of it, are really there there's something that's never really been explored enough. The BMW i3 had had this, the, the Chevy Volt was an extended range electric vehicle to some extent. But basically, if you have enough range, like 80 70 miles in the case of our i3, you can drive almost everywhere on electricity and almost use no gas all year long. But then you can also make a road trip up the east coast of the united states if you want and you're fine in this case if this car had a hundred mile range battery and a range extender almost nobody would ever have to use the gas backup but yeah. at the same time the battery would be small enough that it wouldn't be using that many of the battery minerals that we're talking all the time about not having enough of and of course yeah there's enough lithium in the world but we need to mine and process that and all these other minerals too. And uh, you know, having a smaller batteries is something that could get us a lot more electric driving on the road quicker. So I'm a big well, fan. I, I wish they had gone there. I don't know why they hadn't. I know there's complications with dual dual uh systems in a in a car, you know, having that that old ice platform has a lot of maintenance and costs, but still I think it's a it's worthwhile. And I have something else to say on it, but I give it back to you first. No, I mean, I, I just, I feel very hesitant to bring that up. I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think that, you know, the Volt was a perfect sort of lily pad car. A lot of people bought it. It met their needs around town. And then when it didn't meet their needs, it had that different backup system. And of course that was a different time, 2011, 12, that was a different era. But, you know, if we talk about how can we really reduce the carbon footprint immediately without asking consumers to change behaviors that they're comfortable with, you know, the number one way I think is the plug-in hybrids, because it is something that can be put into production now. And even with a relatively small eight or 10 kilowatt battery, that'll meet 90% of people's everyday needs, you know, going back and forth to the grocery store, dropping kids off at school, commuting to work. And I think that, you know, like what happened with the Volt was most of those guys that bought those, they realized after four or five or six months, man, I'm not driving on gasoline at all. I don't need this. And then they just, their next car was a pure EV. I mean, the problem, there's various problems with plug-in hybrids, but one of them is that some studies have shown people not plugging in their, their vehicles. That's in places where they get company cars, they get free gas and they don't get free electricity and they don't have a place to charge. You know, so this has been, I, I haven't seen all the studies, but I think it depends on the person. So, you know, I know someone locally who, has a Tesla Model 3. He's not at all an EV fanatic. Something got, turned him on to the, to the Model 3 and he got one. And he mostly does local driving. He's an older guy and was loving it. And then he had to do a trip a couple hours south and experienced, you know, the range getting eaten quickly on the high speed on the inter, on an interstate and has complained to me repeatedly about it since then. And he's talked about how Tesla needs to put this self-charging system in the in the car a <laughs> self-charging like, system and i'm like i don't go there because you know it's, it's just not the person or, or the to talk to this kind of you know about, about this kind of thing but at the same time it's like he's the kind of person i mean he may be i don't know what he'll do after the model three but he's the kind of person who would probably absolutely love and benefit from an extended range electric vehicle or a good plug-in hybrid where he would be doing almost all driving on electric locally and then when he got on the road for a road trip for something he would have his old system of fueling up the car at the gas station and 
not have to really think about it. Although, I mean, the i3's tank was not big, so he probably complained that there wasn't enough space. I mean, this is the problem. When you get into the mass market, we have all these monthly pl plug-in vehicle sales reports, and Jose Pontes mostly does them and includes plug-in hybrids. They're they're delineated with separate, you know, markings and all that. But people comp you know, people complain every month, like those aren't those aren't real EVs. Those are gas cars. And you know, if yeah. ninety percent of the driving is electric, they're electric cars with a little bit of gas usage. And we have to recognize there's going to be different people with different needs. And nobody needs a Mazda MX-30. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But like, I, that, that I, was hurtful. I just saw the picture. I was, I was like, we got to get back on track. <laughs> that was hurtful. So I will say this. To me, it's a toy. The MX-30 is a toy. And it's a great toy. If you wanted to buy a second vehicle just to get around town and you had something else, I think it's great. It does the job. And it's really sharp looking. The paint is, you know, I sent you a link earlier on this Mazda has an incredible paint process and it really is the nicest in the industry. And if you're the kind of person who can, you know, pull up on a Harley fat boy or like a CBO screaming Eagle and like really get into the details of like, man, this is nickel plate, not Chrome. This look at this seven mils of paint and all the candies and clears on this paint. This is a great car for you. Assuming that you're using it as like not your primary vehicle, because even just with that 80, miles of range in a hot, hot 90 degree week here in Chicago, running the AC, trying to keep it cool. That range dropped to like 80, 85. And it was the first time in a decade that I was like really eyeballing that, that range meter, you know, it was like driving the old IMEV where you yeah. were like, is this going to make it? You know, <laughs> yeah. like I said, we would have bought one, you know, as a second car, but we just couldn't get one. And I, I don't, I, you know, I don't begrudge anybody who does buy one. I think that they're fun little vehicles as long as you understand what it is, but you can't think of it as a car. It, it's a play thing. It's a toy and it's a fun toy. I mean, it has the acceleration that EVs are known for. It has that zoom, zoom Mazda handling and the, the paint really is second to none. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, for me, if I was, you know, going to have like a toy car in on the side, um, next to the model three you know i would be more inclined to like the mini e or the honda e but uh but i, I oh see we can't it. get the honda e in the u.s but that's yeah, yeah. that's hands down that's awesome i love that thing yeah but some people bought it i i mean there's there's been more than one sale i'm um, so some people <laughs> have bought it <laughs> all the uh dealer principals who own mazda stores bought one for their college kid this is going to be the most ridiculous uh, fight comparison thing that we've had. And it's, it's like the, in a bracket, you know, you have the one seed and like the, the last seed. Or, That's it. Or something. Here's the thing, right? This like is, that this was. Is the, this is the qualifier. Who no, no, no. If you looked at the whole model. bracket. come So so we really did randomize the bracket. I had all these EVs. And is coming. Is bracket set? Yeah, I sent oh, it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. I'll put a link oh, to it here. So oh. coming up, uh, the electric Mini Cooper is going up against the Hummer EV. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> Which, so like, awesome. I don't even care. Like, I love it. I'm that's, taking the hover. That's, that's all awesome me, conversation. That's going to be a good one. And I think this one, like, honestly, we didn't even talk about the Tesla this much because I don't think it's a fair comparison. You're comparing a Vespa to a Ducati. They're totally different animals. The Tesla is a real car that you can drive. You can take it across the country right now without range anxiety. You can be confident that the charging network is going to be there. If somebody pulls up next to you in a 5.0 Mustang, you can leave them in the dust. The Model 3 just wins this hands down. And if you really, 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 really want to get nitpicky on the Model 3, anything that you say about it, like, yeah, the bumper falls off, but it still goes 200 plus miles. Like the bumper it, doesn't it, fall off. <laughs> some some bumpers, of the bumpers maybe, allegedly. I don't know. Fall a few off. bumpers fell off, but there's been <laughs> like over a million sales of this car. I've never met one or seen one with a bumper falling off. Like this is the kind of thing that becomes a big thing on the internet. And then it's always referenced. Like every model three has bumpers falling off of it. <laughs> but that's there my are point. issues. There's e things that you have to snap back on sometimes. Like there's that's an issue. You there, have to, oh, there's come on. rattles. Yeah, I can I can talk to you about that sometime, but uh, but the bumper doesn't fall off. Even if you have to snap stuff back on, like the fact that it can be used <laughs> as a regular car. I mean, if I got a phone call right now that said, "Oh, dude, I got to drive 450 miles to Springfield," 
or whatever it is, I, I, I know that I can hop in a Model 3 and get there in a reasonable amount of time. The yeah, Mazda? Just, let me just clarify now. I've snapped twice. So once, right after I got the car, the like the bottom panel along the, the bottom side of the car, part of it was not snapped. You know, it's just a little plastic snappy thing. You have to push in and it snaps and then it's on. Probably, you know, the service guy just didn't snap it all, all the way back. I mean, on. if those are the reasons that you want to cite when you concede victory to the to Mazda, that's fine with me. But I was pretty sure the Tesla was going to win this one. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, we can talk all about the Tesla, but I think we'll leave that for a future round when it has to actually work. When it has now. to actually work. Yeah. Like it, eventually it'll end up next to a Polestar or something and we'll have to like actually go down the merits for this one. This it should almost be a round. disqualification. This is like Mike but, Tyson knocked you out in 18 seconds. It's over. Yeah, the, the two things we can talk about real quick with to compare I guess, is the kind of interior dash area, touch screen versus the, the Mazda system and the seats. I think the Mazda actually has really cool seats, some of the coolest looking seats. I don't know how they feel because I have, didn't even know it existed, and so I haven't been in one. But <laughs> they're, uh, very, they're very I can't nice. believe you got one as a long, like Joe gets everything. But the seats have a very cool look, and they look they look comfortable too. But I still i I think Tesla's uh, white vegan leather seats are just sublime. They're like clouds. It's like sitting on clouds. Uh, <laughs> Tesla's designed the system really well, where you don't have any part of your body that pushes too much on the seat, where you you get like this spot on your butt or your back or something that's been pushing too long, and it's like wow, that hurts there, you know, they've designed them in a way that to like spread the weight as as evenly as possible. And they're just so soft and so cool here in the Florida, hot Florida climate. I just, oh, yeah. I love them. Uh, and then the dash, like it's just this minimalist interior of the Model 3. It's not for everybody. I definitely don't say it's for everybody. But for those of us who love it, it's like, it's very hard to imagine something else. Like it's just such a clean, minimalist. You get in, oh, there's your nice, clean, without any fluff, any, any extra. And um, I think it's just really nice when it takes you 14 minutes to figure out how to get to the HVAC settings, the first time you drive it, let's hope you don't end up under a semi. <laughs> I think the Tesla, it looks great. I, I just find it in, in practical terms. It's not what I want. I like knobs. I like buttons. I like being able to kind of adjust stuff without taking my eyes off the road. And I know that that kind of familiarity would come if I spent longer amounts of time in the Tesla, but um, I'm not going to do that. You always end up in these pictures, like looking like you're laying in the floor. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's somehow the pictures you take and the, and the way you sit just ends up, you're like laying on your back with your foot where the gas pedal is. I mean, that's amazing. Head with my head. Yeah. Gas well, that's how I drive. I have a mirror on my shoes. <laughs> from do Florida, that. what can you do? <laughs> from Florida. Yeah, exactly. All the right. Span, I think we got a show for this one. For as one-sided as this was, man. Yeah, I think we got to give it to the Tesla, right? We're going to officially give it to the Tesla? Yeah, it went a bit weirder than I expected even, but uh, you can read the article <laughs> for a little bit more of a normal back and forth take on, on this. Of course, don't forget to like us on YouTube if you like these discussions. Uh, and subscribe even if you don't channel, like them especially if you don't like them, don't like them. Yeah. yeah otherwise we have someone you know bring a bat to your knee <laughs> not saying anything but you know we track you 